Now we're going to give a few examples where we apply these ideas that we've developed. So suppose a firm uses in inputs some whole number to produce a single product. say wheat checks you know so we need a uh, wheat and whatever other else stuff they put into wheat checks um, maybe some sugar stuff like that so assume that and that X in RN and we need cardboard right we need to we need stuff to make that plastic container so this represents an input bundle And let's say y is equal to g of x is the firm's c1 production function. That is, if I, if I have this input bundle, then this is exactly how much stuff I can make, how many units I can make of wheat checks. And I, and I am going to assume that it's C1, and typically it should be C1. And if it's not C1, then we can approximate it by a C1 function. I won't talk about that, but it's possible. Let P denote the price of the sold product. So that revenue is Rx equals P times G of X. So just simple, straightforward model. And let C of X denote the cost. All right, so this is the revenue, this is the great part, and now we have to talk about the cost of this input bundle X. So the profit function is capital P of X is equal to, well of course it's the revenues, not the real number one, but revenues X minus the costs. formula that we know and love. That's our profit function. Well, any any firm worth its salt is trying to maximize this function. So we seek the max of this function. Only we really want it on, of course, Rn plus, where I'm defining this to be a set of all x in Rn such that xi is greater than or equal to 0 for i equals 1 up to n. So of course I want all my, this, my, my input bundles are always going to be positive and I can have negative stuff. Well by our theorem, the first order conditions, we have to have that at the maximum 0 is equal to the great or the the gradient or the individual partial derivatives at xi and this is going to be d r d xi at x star minus the cost xi x star and then as the marginal as i change x the marginal of the revenue as I change x is going to have to be equal to the marginal cost. Of course, when we un unfold what this means, right? So, uh, or so we interpret this in the economic way as saying the marginal revenue or the marginal 
product or revenue product from using one more unit of input I must balance the marginal cost. More is usually spelled with an E. That's great. That's, that's a great interpretation and that's kind of what we should expect. And so if our model's not producing that, then we would be worried. But it does, so we're good. Now let's make a simplifying assumption. If C of X is equal to E1 X1 plus, or let's say W, WX1 plus W2 X2 plus WN XN. So I'm going to make a simplifying assumption of my cost function which is that it's just linear. There's a fixed cost for every single input and nothing, uh, usually this doesn't happen, right? Because you have economies of scale. If you buy more stuff, you can get it more cheaply. But let's assume this model at first, and this is a good, in, a small, in small situations, this is actually pretty accurate. Um, then star becomes Well, the revenue, the marginal product revenue, or revenue product, is equal to P DG DXI will have to be equal to WI or DG, this production function, XI at X star has to be equal to W over P. That's great. So we get these nice conditions and then we can go back and verify, okay, well, what are the points where this happens? And we can examine them and then use the Hessian to determine if these are maxima or minima. And that would be the basic game that we would play.